Yeah, I wanted to ask you because uh, you're correctly talking about Trump, and obviously he's the most powerful man on the planet. But uh, you ran to be in the Democratic Party, and it strikes me that, uh, of course, we need to uh, we need to be strident. Uh, there's Democratic lawmakers uh, really being loud against Trump's refugee ban, his xenophobic immigration policies, all this. But frankly, there's not a damn peep coming out of Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Elizabeth Warren, you know, these bastions uh, of the, you know, they say they're the party of the working people. Well, uh, a water protector just got the living shit kicked out of him on, a bri- on the highway yesterday. Uh, screaming, oh, you know, my hip, my hip. Nothing coming out of the Democratic Party. Uh, or, uh, you know, a fake arrest after fake arrest, including yours. Uh, nothing coming out of the Democratic Party. And the reason I'm hard on the Democratic Party is I'm not going to waste my time, you know, begging for Republicans to show their moral compass. These are the people that are telling uh, normal, everyday people where they're fighting for your rights, for your dignity. Uh, so, yeah, we can't normalize Trump. But, but don't you think by the, by the Democratic leadership basically standing pat, the, the first and last time I heard them say anything was the day Obama denied the permit. They sent out statements cheering them on. They hadn't said anything before then, and they haven't said anything since, uh, ex- excluding Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, Raul Grijalva, and, and a couple others. Yes, I, I don't, you know... The Democratic Party is is in identity crisis, and I think that they need to find themselves. We need to find ourselves. We need something that is real, that is progressive, that is for the working people of this country, but is also willing to incorporate things like the concept that uh, that that big finance represents. If you you recall the bailout of two thousand seven. I think we need a party that's willing to take on big finance, big extraction, the prison military industrial complex that is, that is willing to kind of look ourselves in the mirror for the empire that we are and, and the oppressive nature that, that our very standard of living uh, dictates that, that we go around the world and we make enemies of people, we expropriate resources from many nations we actually cause a lot of strife a lot of conflict and we and we cause these re- refugees to come here and then we try to ban them and so you know big big money has sunk its teeth so far into politics that it's extremely difficult to find anybody that is willing to stand on their own two feet and provide that leadership that we so desperately need in this country in this world my, my last question is, you know, uh, I don't want to I don't want to talk like this is over, because like we spoke about, there are uh, legal uh, routes being taken. Um, obviously, you have a you have a case uh, that you have to deal with uh, that. I'm sure you know. I'm going to stay on that. But I want to just ask you overall, you've seen what has gone on the last few months. Uh, what do you think in terms of the bigger picture takeaway here? Because to me, having been there so many times, it doesn't seem like it's only, of course it was about the water, but it seems like kind of a, a sleeping giant has been awoken among Native Americans as well as just progressive people in general, just people in general. I mean, there were so many different types of people at, at the height of this, you know, 10,000 at, at, at the main camp. And it seemed like everybody was coming together, I don't want to be cheesy, but to kind of like do what Bernie said, like enough is enough. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you think is kind of, I don't want to say the legacy, but what's the takeaway to you uh, of if, if, if this pipeline goes through, uh, what is the momentum and, the, and the, the movement from there? No, I think, I think you're hitting your you're spot on there. I think you're hitting right on it. It's that, you, you know, when we take, we, 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 I don't want to say on the left or we in, in, the, in the, the liberal or the revolutionary or the liberation circles like to talk about the system, you know, the, the monetary system of, of currency, of big finance, of, of debt, of big extraction, all these, these institutions, these industries that prop up this economic reality that's sold as civilization to us. 
and with, with within which we have to participate just to provide you know we have, we've all got to make some bank somehow to provide the the basics the food the shelter the energy the water those those sorts of things and that that system and consumerism is very much a part of of what I'm about to say is that that system is oppressive to our spiritual nature and so we're always seeking to liberate from that to find these little cracks in the system these little crevices to to try to seep through there and feel a little bit of what it feels like to be free to have an actual a government a democracy of sense of camaraderie and, and brotherhood and and spiritual awakening like when you're out there there was a lot of spiritual things happening and so for the people who came to the camp the tens of thousands of people who came and the millions in this country and, and probably the billions around the world we all experienced something together something that stood up to the mightiest imperial military in the world something that stood up to the to the to the largest military power it was truly a uh, david against goliath out here and for for people to feel that small sense of freedom even if, even if just for a little bit to say that enough is enough we don't want to answer to big money big extraction to the corporate state to corporate rule to the the very system that has hijacked our democracy and has run roughshod over american citizens and is now about to run roughshod over native nations who most americans want to see lifted out of poverty most americans want to honor treaties that doesn't mean we you give all the land back to the indians it means that you stop the legal political and economic oppression that's very real that if you study federal indian law you can easily identify how native nations are held in in bondage right now and so i think it it signifies that people want to do right and they want a government or they want leaders they want leadership elected officials probably were these kinds of leaders sometime maybe i don't know if they ever were but what we're saying when we come together and we we spend that time and we we're willing seven, over 700 people were willing to be arrested people almost lost their arms somebody lost their eyesight good friends of mine were shot with less less lethal rounds and just permanently maimed rights were violated people people were water blasted in water cannon in freezing temperatures i mean people are willing to put their body in between you know what is sacred what should be protected water and the the power of the corporate state that is operating under the color of state law and order state law enforcement and the national guard they're willing to place themselves in harm's way to redirect the, the direction that our country is taking right now which is toward tyranny and and away from any semblance of real democracy and 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 a real respect for constitutional rights and you know the demand for clean energy economies right now that's that's all of those things came together people who love the constitution and really understand what it means and respect it and hold it in high regard and then the environmental movement or the demand for clean energy uh native nations uh it was just 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 a you know a confluence of different struggles that that we haven't seen before and that i think those those are the takeaways that we've got to make live it's our responsibility to make them live now you know in, into for sure the next 45 months like we we are kind of on a, on a time clock here and we're all we're all paying attention and we're all worried about what the next crazy thing is going to is going to happen what what that next thing to come out of the administration is going to be what what is Steve Bannon up to next we're all kind of wondering that and we need to be on guard you know getting woke and staying woke and recognizing that we have more in common than than we do that divides us uh real quick uh whatever you are free, are at liberty to discuss uh do you have a court date for your for your case as you mentioned it's almost laughable you're being charged with inciting a riot for the crime of Uh, you know praying next to tps uh at at a camp that you had created 
We've got, uh, yes, and we've also got footage of that. We're just waiting for the appropriate time to release that because there were things said at the bridge there that were, I think they were live streamed, but you could you could tell that law enforcement was definitely going to target me. They, they said it, I mean, blatantly. Yeah. That we're going to hold you responsible if anything happens. They, they were, they were, they continued to come at me. And, you know, I was charged that day a colleague of mine, Vanessa Castle, was charged that day with inciting a riot. And she has a, a court date on the 6th, and I have a court date on the 7th. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't have, you know, an attorney yet, but I plan to have one. And we plan to, to fight these charges as hard as we can, but we also plan to hold Morton County accountable for the, all of the human, civil, and constitutional rights violations that they've inflicted on native nations, on unarmed American citizens. And so, uh, yeah, that's the, the, uh, the arraignment and the preliminary hearing that, that I've got on March 7th. But anytime you want to talk about, you know, this kind of stuff or, or, or whatever it is, uh, you've, you've, you've always got me, Jordan. So, uh, Chase Iron Eyes, or as I like to call them, Chase Iron Balls. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time and I'll, I'll stay on all this and keep in touch with you. Thanks, Jordan. Okay.